Before we begin to sing, we need to think about preparation and warm-up. Now, singing's all about using the whole body, not just the voice. Everything in you plays a part in the type of sound that you are going to create. So to start with, let's do some pitch exercises. So Ben, can you play me a C? And I'm going to sing a third above that. La. And we're going to do that same thing again, except this time I'm going to sing a third above and Deborah's going to sing a fifth above. La. One, two, three, four. Lay, li, li, lo, lu. One, two, three, four. Ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. make sure that your jaw is making R O R not the little mouth and that you're supporting it from the diaphragm let's sing that one to R after two one two So the diaphragm goes down, creating a vacuum, which then means air can be sucked into the lungs. And as the diaphragm goes back up again, you breathe out. If you're singing in groups in your setting, you're probably using harmonies when you sing. Harmonies add colour and texture and depth to any song, but it also makes sense to know how to use them and how not to clash with other singers, how to make the best of that skill. So we're going to look at Amazing Grace now, just the first verse, and Ben's going to play it in one way to start with, and I'm going to harmonise. And the second time round, he's going to just change one or two chords and see if you can pick up where those changes come. you can sing my comforter in a stronger voice again that would be fine just avoid swapping very obviously between voices within the same line
So what we're going to do now is take the rest of those lines that I missed out the first time, wherever he may send you, protect you through the storm, at the wonders he has shown you, and once again into our doors. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, take you through the storm. usually start the day off just by um, getting my voice going in the morning by humming. I know that's a lot less stressful on the voice than actually singing, so uh, this morning I was up at about 7, getting ready for an early morning worship thing at 9am, so as soon as I was out of bed I was just walking around the, the room just humming and, and getting my vocal cords warmed up. Uh, so about half the time I, uh, I do vocal warm-ups with a, with a CD that just basically has scales and different vocal exercises. And, um, and a quarter of the time I don't have the CD with me and it's a, it's a botched um, one or two minute warm up which basically just involves me yelling in some back room, wherever we happen to be. And, uh, and the other quarter of the time I just go on just dry, which is a lot easier to do at night than it is in the morning. Usually I'll just run my scales, um, a great way to actually uh, to do things, there's some things called the motorboat where you know you do your you know, mouth like that, it actually helps release vocal tension, um, you know, even things, if your voice is really tired, a good thing to do is use like uh, lemons and honey type stuff. But you got to kind of spread your tongue out and open up your throat and what happens is you start thinking about it and you close your throat up. So just learning how to let the air come from, from down below and open up and relax your voice instead of tighten your voice. Um, in my experience, women generally sing about a minor third lower than men. That's their vocal range is about a minor third lower than men. So um, if I have to choose, that's about a tone and a half for on a guitar, that's like uh, four, four frets uh, down that you put the, the capo if you wanted to tailor it for ladies. And generally, um, I find it, it's, it's easier for men to sing lower than it is for women to sing higher. So I err on the side of ladies, and uh, I guess that's the approach I take. One thing I, I, I thought years ago was that women could sing higher and guys sang low, but that's totally wrong. It's actually the guys that can sing high and, and the female voices struggle to sing some of those songs that we are comfortable with. So when you're, you're thinking of songs, um, if you've got a predominantly female congregation, then you may have to put some of those songs into a different key. I've got a friend who's, who leads worship and she always takes the songs down, maybe a, a good tone. Remember, you're not just a singer. You're part of the band. Singers are musicians too. If you've got five instruments in your band and you're the vocalist as well, think of it as a six-piece band and then sing accordingly. Yeah, when it comes to harmonies, I think that um, less is definitely more. I think it's one of those things that is great to just enhance key moments in the song. Here's another tip. Um, sing off the mic on a rehearsal to find your harmonies. Your muscles have memory, so the more you sing a song, the better your muscle memory is. In other words, the easier it will be for you to pitch that song and sing those notes. But another um, important thing to realize is that water is, um, does its work inside of your throat and your voice and your vocal cords long before the actual time when you're singing. It's important to get up in the morning and drink a lot of water. It's also important not to drink a lot of caffeine because caffeine um, dries out your voice and it, uh, it kind of sucks the moisture out of your vocal cords.